Hello, I'm Christian Lechner, Professor of Entrepreneurship at Unibice. The other day I talked to a good friend of mine uh, in Munich who works in computer science. And I told him, you know, I met this computer guru from Cambridge the other day, and it was really interesting to get to know him. Um, incredible person. And he told me, yeah, yes, I know. I, I went to dinner with him the other night. And he said, what? You went to dinner with him the other night? You know this guy? Oh, my God. How small is the world? How often have you said, how small is the world when you met someone and this someone had knew someone that you already that you also knew well this is the topic we'll be talking about we'll be talking about networks and the small world phenomena now, if you have already watched the video done by my colleague emanuela rondi you will have some idea about networks you've heard about ties and actors and bridging and bonding and networks and today we will look at this phenomenon of what we call the small world phenomena and network. And this is important because it has a lot of applications. For example, the way how you can get information, the way how you can resources are exchanged, the way how information spreads, the way why do fake news spread so fast? Or why news in any case spread so fast, but also why viruses spread so fast. And this will be the topic of my talk. Here we have Marlon Brando. And um, we will use him as an example. And, and the question, for example, could be when we talk about the small world phenomenon, how many people do you need to connect a Turkish kebab restaurant owner in Frankfurt with Marlon Brando in LA. Um, actually, I have not chosen that by chance because the Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung has once um, started this experiment, which is actually inspired by an experiment already made by Milgram and Roberts in the 1960s. And the overall question could be, you know, how many people do you need to connect anyone on this planet with anyone else? So you with anyone else on this planet. For example, you know, what if we would connect you to, let's say, Donald Trump, or maybe not, maybe you might prefer, what if you would be connected to Angela Merkel? And, and, and how many interlinkages would be needed? And, and that's the overall question. So how many intermediate relationships do we need to relate any person on this planet with anyone else on this planet? And the answer to that question is, on average, we, need not, we do not need more than six. And here we talk about the six degrees of separation. And I would say, well, how does this work? I mean, that's not so much. I mean, we have billions of people living on this planet. So how do you connect everyone with everyone with just a few interlinkages? I mean, on one hand, we have this kebab owner sitting in Frankfurt, okay? And on the other hand, we have Marlon Brando in LA. They live on two different continents. And they seem to be really worlds apart. So how do you connect them? And this is how it looks. So here we have our kebab owner in his restaurant in Frankfurt. He is... Uh, immigrant entrepreneur from Turkey. And as it happens to be, he has actually an uncle who lives in Los Angeles. So we already have made this huge step from Frankfurt to LA and he has this relative who's also, as you can see, owning a kebab restaurant in LA. Now this kebab owner has also a daughter and as this daughter is not completely isolated, the daughter of the kebab owner in LA, which is the uncle of the kebab owner in Frankfurt, um, has friends and has a particular friend. And now this particular friend has also another friend, which is the daughter of Marlon Brando. And Marlon Brando is obviously linked to his daughter or was linked to his daughter. So we can say mission computed. 
I hear say, well, <laughs> this is chance. I mean, th this guy was lucky that, 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 you know, it just happened to be so, but normally it doesn't work like this. So let's go a step back and see why normally it actually happens. I like to describe the organization of network structures as bunches of grapes and bridges. Now, you have already seen something about the actors. So here we have two actors and they are connected to each other. So they have a relationship. Now, obviously, when we talk about networks, we talk about more actors that are connected to each other through relationships and friendship or and because they work together or because they play together in a tennis club. Now, if you take a small village, for example, we have different people, different actors, and actually in small villages, one of the characteristics of small villages is that basically everyone knows everyone and everyone is too connected to everyone else. So what we have is what I would call a bunch of grapes. You know, in a bunch of grapes, everyone is connected somehow to, 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 to the root. And so everyone is connected and we would have what we would call a close and a dense network. So everyone is connected with everyone. And if you really look at it, um, a lot of our close networks are organized like this. So in a village, we have a very dense and close network. Let's say you, you play tennis in a tennis club. In a tennis club, everyone knows each other, so everyone is densely connected. Um, if you work in a small or medium-sized company, everyone knows each other. If you think about your school, so we have relatively dense and close networks. Now, of these dense and close networks, obviously, there are multiples. So, you know, you play tennis in a tennis club, so there is your tennis club network. You work in a company, so there is your company co-worker network. You have your separate friendship network. And what we see is that we have relative centralized players. Then we have particular actors which act as bridges, which means they, they, they connect different bunches. Let's say you might need a lawyer for whatever purpose, you know. Now, in your tennis club, plays a lawyer, so it's easy to get him, but he's not the specialized in, in, the, in, the, in this method because he is um, a public lawyer, but what you actually need is, is someone who is specialized, let's say, in construction, in construction law. But he obviously is connected to his lawyer network and his lawyer network there than a construction lawyer, so you find a construction lawyer. So these bridges are quite important because they, they virtually bridge one cluster with another, and as we have seen in the Marlon Brando example, they, they bridge continents with each other and they open up new world. So these bridges are really important. So on one hand, we have this bunch of grapes, um, where we have a lot of bonding relationships and everyone knows each other. And then we have these bridges, which also means if you think about information, um, information can only spread out the whole world. While it spreads very quickly within, within the bunch, it can only spread throughout the world if we have a bridge to another bunch. And the same actually applies to viruses. Now, if you think about all the virus discussions, um, you might have read in the press that only a few highly central people are infecting most of the people. Now, from that, you can say, hmm, so we have a problem with these highly central people. And, you know, if, if, if we want to slow down the spread of a virus, we need to isolate these highly central people. But actually, we draw the wrong conclusions because it's true that highly central people, for example, if we talk about the virus, are spreading the virus to many. And so they say, OK, they are responsible. But what if we take a highly central actor out of the network, so we isolate it? And I show you this in this graph. Now, what you will see is it wouldn't make any difference. So let's say in this village, we have two infected people. And one of them is the highly central. So we take the highly central out. But given the fact that the network is very dense, 
it doesn't make any difference because the, the, the virus will spread very quickly within this bunch of bonding relationships. So it doesn't help us a lot, which also means, you know, when you talk about closed networks, you talk about villages, you know, you really need to isolate basically everyone because everyone is connected to everyone. But what if we want to avoid that the virus is spreading out to the rest of the world? Well, then we have to cut the bridges. Now, in Emmanuel Rondi's video, you have also seen a map of the tube in London. Now, you know, if you're a mayor, and, and no mayor in the world has actually taken this decision, one of the first things that you have to do is you need to shut down the public transportation system. So if you shut down the tube system or give only access to medical workers or police workers that, that actually need to exit it, you cut the bridges. So let's say in London you have one suburb which is highly infected and others are not. Now, how does it get transported, you know, through the tube? Because, you know, there you build bridges and people go out and they will infect other people in other suburbs. And what does this mean? That these bridge functions are really important. Now, in the example that, that I have here, you will see, you actually see that the people who are the bridges are not very simple. They don't have a lot of relationships. And this is very typical because sometimes they're kind of peripheral actors. So let's say, you know, I'm, I'm in the tennis club, but, you know, these, these, these tennis players, they're very particular and they're not really my, 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 my kind of type, you know. Um, so I do not bond too much with them. But given the fact that I have a lot of different interests, then I, I can bridge from the tennis club to other worlds and can bridge to, to many other worlds. So very often it's, it's not the most central and the most connected people who are responsible to spreading out information or helping to exchange goods or services throughout the world. But um, these are the bridges. So the important takeaway is the world is small because on one hand we have closed social networks, which are like bunches of grapes where everyone is connected with everyone. And then we have bridges that connect different bunches. And this is why we have a small world phenomenon. So the next time where you meet someone and you make this discovery that you have a relationship in common, think about, well, what might be the underlying network that actually connects me to this person and connects my friend to this person? because this is how the small world phenomenon actually works. The first question I actually asked you was, how could we connect you with Angela Merkel? Well, the answer is you might know the kebab owner in Frankfurt because he already has a relationship with Angela Merkel. I know I could have told you that at the beginning of the video, but now you already watched the video and I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned on Unibizet. And thank you for your attention.